Hi, it's Friday, it's three o'clock. Welcome to Together Unlocked, brought to you as always by Together 2012. We're a community interest company led by disabled artists based in the London borough of Newham, known for all sorts of things these days, but best known to us as the main London host borough for the London 2012 Paralympics. I'm Jude Gosling, artist and artistic director We've been locked down here in my studio in Canning Town since last March, along with our chair, the artist Julie Newman. We're going to come back to us for some audio description and a bit more introduction. But first, we're going to go over to the other end of our long wheeled virtual sofa in the West Midlands for some introductions and some audio description. But also on a Friday, we dress up to go out to stay in. This was first started in New Zealand, so very much a role model in all sorts of ways. In New Zealand, in their very first and probably their only lockdown, they dressed very formally as if to go to the opera or to a dinner party on a Friday. We don't really do that. We dress up to go out to stay in to do all sorts of things, real or imaginary. So I'm looking forward, guys, to finding out what you're dressed up to go out to stay in to do. Well, good afternoon. Welcome to Friday on Unlocked. So I am Robin Sergina. I am Business Director at Together 2012, co-host of Unlocked and an artist known as Angry Fish. Today I am slightly less coiffed than usual because I am dressed as an artist this afternoon. I am so I am I am wearing ever so windsweptish grey hair with my normal no wind black arm glasses and uh pale face um i'm wearing a grey i guess a grey uh sweatshirt um and i'm wearing a circular scarf i don't know there's probably some proper name for it a scarf with no end anyway so you wrap it around a couple of times you're going to tell me in a bit that there is a real name for it um, and i i am dressed to brave the norfolk broads and go and do some watercolor painting lovely yes there is a name but i can't remember what it is either <laughs> only a friend very kindly knitted us one each for christmas and i had to ask her the name before i thanked her and of course having a very poor memory i've forgotten it again so if anybody wants to tell us on live chat nip over to youtube we would love to know and afternoon i'm tracy surgeon and um it's um pleased to be here again to talk to you about some of the arts that I do. Um, I've got long blonde hair with a fringe which is currently parting itself in the middle because it needs cutting so I might have to have a go at that. Um, I'm wearing a short sleeve red t-shirt uh, with a bit of a logo on it. I don't know if you can see it. No, it's a silver logo that said it's, it's hype hun. Um, I'm wearing a long pale grey sweatshirt and some black leggings because my thought for the weekend is to go and try some pottery. Oh, fantastic. We've been huge fans, haven't we, of the Great British Pottery Throwdown and we might just come back to that in a minute if we get an opportunity. I think the first thing I should say about our audio description is we've got quite strange light. We are celebrating LGBT plus history month. We've got some rainbow flags up in the background, but despite our best efforts all week, whatever we seem to do, we seem to kind of have lights that, well, we should discuss this again on Monday when we talk about photography and filmmaking. In the meantime, as always, I have a self-styled Hennard Corona crop good thing you can't see that in real life or indeed don't please don't Judy or on the 4k I've got green eyes behind black plastic glasses pale olive skin black wrist braces silver colored jewelry and I'm wearing a short sleeved purple t-shirt which in white print also says fabulous embroidered on it I've got a black leather waistcoat which has got a silver heart badge on it I have What's this called, Julie? It's the axe, isn't it? I can't remember the name. Call yourself a lesbian. So I've got the lesbian axe symbol on a pendant around my neck and I've got some 
bracelets that are in rainbow colours and also in purple. And I am dressed up to go out to stay in to go to a drag queen still life painting session. And I'm going to tell you a bit more about that after 3.30 under something for the weekend. So I'm kind of hazarding a guess that all four of us independently have decided to come today being very arty. Hardly surprising we are an arts organisation. But um, Maggie Hambling, or should I say Julie Newman, who are you? What do you look like? Um, and what are you going to do? I'm Julie Newman. I'm the chair of Together 2012, as Ju said earlier on. Today I'm sporting an artist's beret. I have three paintbrushes tucked under my ear or behind my ear. Uh, I have dark rim glasses. I'm wearing a purple and uh, multicolored star, green star, blue star poncho thing. Uh, I'm dressed up as an artist um, and I'm going to go uh, and meet another artist but going back in time I got terribly inspired because I saw there's a Lego version of do you want a hint starry starry That's night <laughs> <laughs> paint your colors blue and gray am I am I getting close absolutely what, what? spot on yes no we did share this earlier on so she's not psychic <laughs> um but no I'm going to go and see my my best man Vincent Vincent van Gogh and going to have a cup of coffee with him at the Cafe Terrace in Arles. Well, that does sound fabulous. And um, yes, I think you look very, very appropriate. I was just remembering back to being 28 in 1990, goodness me, and having a spontaneous spinal fracture on my way to see the, um, there was an amazing Vincent van Gogh exhibition in Van Gogh and kind of dragging myself around this incredible show, but also being in absolute agony. It was the last thing I did for a very long time. But it was, yeah, I'm not saying that being in severe pain made it even better, but it was an incredible, incredible show. There's a Vincent van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. And um, given the unlikelihood of any of us getting there anytime soon, this is where the show was. I'll put that up under our highlights and links. So if you look on our website, www.together2012.org.uk, you have the page where you can watch this show as it's being recorded with live captions. But in a pull down linked menu, we have our highlights and links page. We'll have all of the links, the pictures and anything else we discussed today will be up on that page by five o'clock this evening. So do check it out. And just to add in terms of audio description, a couple of things. Behind Julie and I, we have our teddy bear proudly wearing a medal. This week's Wednesday Clockwork Paralympics was the first ever draw. I don't think the Paralympians in the West Midlands were too keen on the concept of a draw, but they kind of opted for it rather than losing. But we don't see their teddy bear behind their, well, in front of their red velvet curtains. Maybe it's hiding behind. I, no, I did actually try to do what you've done and shove it into the shelf, but the weight <laughs> of the curtains, it just it wouldn't happen. <laughs> Well, we're just going to have to talk about that. For anybody completely mystified about what teddy bears have got to do with disability arts, well, they probably have got quite a lot, but really we're celebrating and supporting the virtual bear hunt. The virtual bear hunt takes place all around the world. If you put teddy bears into your live streams or any other shows, then young people doing the teddy bear hunt can spot them. It just makes life a bit more interesting when they're having such a difficult time. And if you stick a bear in your window, then when they're out for their daily exercise, they can look for those bears too. So um, I think we did have an arty bear, which I suspect I have a little caravan that I used for an artist residency in Dorset over a five-year period. And I remember they had a wonderful... Um, scenario where you could do teddy bear parachuting Ooh. and the fire brigade would come in and you got given your parachute you paid for your teddy bear and they literally threw the teddy bears off the top of their um <laughs> in their parachutes and somewhere on the, at the same event i managed to buy a teddy bear because you don't usually have one in the caravan 
And it looks just like Julie in the sense that it's got a beret and little paint brushes, but like, and it's called Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> but sadly, like I say, that is no more. Still, fret not, because on a Friday morning, we have our very own art club. As an organisation, we run a programme of events led by disabled artists for everybody. So we have performances, screenings, exhibitions and much, much more. More usually, we would also have things like street art and carnival parades, although, of course, they're on hold at the moment. But we also run a programme year round targeted for disabled people and whoever you want to bring with you. Everything we do is free online and offline. And what we've done is taken our weekday morning clubs programme and moved it over to Zoom and Telephone. So on a Friday morning, the well, in the past, the art club used to meet in a physical venue and spend two hours drawing and painting. And when they did that, it was very much about finding their own voice. So we would provide a bigger variety as we could afford of different colours and sizes and types of papers and canvases and paints and crayons and pastels. And then people would just do what they felt moved to explore and experiment. But what we do now is we keep our clubs to an hour because we think that's as much as anyone can cope with on zoom and we have a still life photograph which we will be putting up on the highlights and links page but let me just show you now what they were drawing or painting today so let me get that up properly so this is viewed from above and it's a sewing basket with the lid off. So you've got different spools of thread in the um, big, well, the circular sewing box on the left. And then the second circle, which is the lid on the right, has got a few more reels and there are a few reels. Tray yeah, Tracy, could you help me out with the audio description here? Um, yeah, as G was saying, this is the uh, still life that the arts club were doing. And um, it's a selection of beautiful colours, actually. There's a red, a green, a sea blue, a peach, and they're sort of scattered randomly. Um, and there's some red ribbon draped across. And on the other side of the sewing box, there's um, a complete mixture of earth colours. So we've got a dark brown through to the light brown to a very pale pink um, and it's sat on a blue velvet background um, yeah it looks really cool thank you for that so we'll be popping that photograph up which was produced by Alison March and Alison's our club's program leader and of course an international artist in her own right so these are some of the pictures that people did this morning and so this one is by Sophia in felt tip. I think you've done a great job of that, Sophia. I thought mm. it was a fiendishly difficult thing to draw. And then this is Glory Sengo, who's also a member of our associate drama company, Act Up Newham. And they're going to be back with us with new films very soon. I really like that, Glory. Mm. It's turned into a complete abstract, and I think that's a really interesting thing to do with a still life. So let me take that off. And then this is Crystal Peasy, who's painted it. And I okay. think done a very, yes, done a very good job there, Crystal. Well done. So if anybody fancies showing us the pictures that they're going to produce from, like I say, the photo will be up on highlights and links. Yeah, please mm -hmm. do email us. In fact, I'll just pop up our address on the bottom of the screen now. But it's, it's info or TV at together2012.org.uk. And, um, and in fact, I've got one more picture to show you from an act upper, and this is Pratesh Patel. And we often enjoy seeing Pratesh's work, don't we? Pratesh has yeah. done some wonderful pictures for us. But what he says is he's just been trying to do painting by numbers and recommends it as something that's quite relaxing to do, but also a way of getting into a different artist's a completely different technique. 
So let me just pop this up onto the screen and I'll get Tracy to do a bit of audio description. Oh yeah, I mean this is this is really nice. It's a um a lab a Labrador, like a Labrador puppy, yeah. um sitting in what looks like a really tropical background. You've got the bottoms of some palm trees, some nice green leaves behind the dog. The dog looks like it could be sitting in like a little puddle. Um, it looks like moving water, it looks, you know, and there's some light grasses, some tall green grasses. So they look like they're waving um, with the wind. It's, it's got real depth and sort of 3D to it. It's really nice. It's a golden Labrador wearing a black um, necklace, not a necklace, Colour. what they're called, collar. Collar. <laughs> Colour. Although it has Necklaces, to be. all right. <laughs> Oh, dogs do wear necklaces, yeah. <laughs> believe you me. I don't know whether anybody else watched Pooch Perfect on the BBC last night, but um, mm. there's no reason for you to because you're not really dog owners. But um, but it's a, it's a bit like Bake Off with dogs, as somebody <laughs> described it, only really they're not baking the dogs, they're competing. It's groomers, professional dog groomers competing. Oh, and I, I, did, I did see that. Sorry, G. Yeah, I did see that a couple of weeks ago. I was watching it and then my... Um, the other half of the family came in and said, what are you watching? So this is quite good. <laughs> well, I'm finding it really useful for hairdressing tips because, of course, <laughs> I don't go to the hairdressers either. What was particularly unfortunate last night, because they had the first of the semifinals, so they were doing Asian freestyling. Now, you think that's a swimming style, don't you, Robin? <laughs> so Asian freestyling is a way of dressing your dog up. And as we know, Robin has nipped out for a couple of professional haircuts. I've gone to do it yourself and Julie and Josh have been growing their hair. And I realised that the images I had in my mind as I was taking the dog brush and putting the ribbons and everything on it was actually Julie and not the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> So I think, sadly, I was watching Asian freestyling for different things I could do with Julie. So, <laughs> but, um, so far, she's still refused to let me take the dog clippers or to her or indeed the scissors. So perhaps before I dig myself into an even deeper hole, given that we're not able to get out or see another <laughs> hole, we'd better move on to Tracy's very own online arts club activity. <laughs> and let me just pop this up on screen and then Tracy can start telling us all about it. Well, what we're looking at is, um, I quite like doing things with paper plates. So this one is, I decided to make um, a mobile. So I used a purple paper plate and it's such a simple thing to do because you literally just start at one side and keep cutting um, in circles until you get right to the middle. And when you open the plate up, it sort of falls and creates um, you know, an interesting shape, like a bit of a universe shape. Um, and in this one, I've hung some silver stars, which I basically made out of a cardboard box and some um, silver tin foil and a bit of string. Just going to put the closer up one on. Yeah. And then I just thought, you know, I wanted something to do, the, the contrast between the bottom of the plate being white and the purple just looks quite nice. The stars shine and sparkle a little bit. So, uh, you know, the the stars sparkle but you, you could do anything you if you were into cats you could put cats on there or any particular animal or flower I think it's just nice it's got a bit of movement if you put it in a window just something different yeah I think it's fabulous I mean it like you say it's so pretty so let's just talk a little bit about how you can do the variations so you were talking about cats Mm. One of the things you did last week that I thought was so clever was use junk mail and yeah. cut all the cars out of the Motability Car magazine. So there's all sorts of old calendars as well as junk mail. You know, you can get, I mean, I was dealing with your junk mail yesterday and, um, you know, occasionally you can get junk mail from animal charities. Mm. Well, again, you know, those are pictures... I would have thought probably if it's on paper, you would need to stick it onto some cardboard, maybe cut it out first. Yeah, I mean, I would, what I found is I just used um, one side of a cereal box and stuck on the shapes 
um, and then cut it out because I did try it the other way around. I cut out all the stars and then tried to cut the cereal box to match, and that was really difficult. So that's a lesson that I learned to stick the paper on to to and, the box. And just just to add, they're sandwiched. So we basically we make we had a template of stars of uh, so you could, so the, then the two stars were stuck together with the string inside so that whichever so it spins and you don't get like a shiny side and just the cardboard. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. really clever. I mean, I suppose the other way you can do it is to um just poke a hole through to put the string in. Yeah, you could do that as well. It'd be fine. You've got to be careful because if you're using a star shape, it, the point's quite small, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. I, I think it looks like Stairway to Heaven. I think it's <laughs> great. I love it. Yeah, so yeah. do I. I mean, I'm quite tempted to do some of my own, which is why I'm pursuing it. Presumably kitchen foil could be yes. over a cereal packet and then yeah. cut the stars out of that. If, yeah, that's exactly what I did, actually. Yeah. It's oh, I see. Foil. So it wasn't silver craft paper, it's silver foil. Yeah, just tin foil. Yeah. Which it's smooth, but if you crinkled it equally, you'd get a really nice reflection off that. Yes, and I think if anybody's sitting there thinking actually using scissors is really, really difficult. The other thing I was thinking, and particularly because Julie talks to us a lot about outer space over the time, is just to roll little silver balls of paper in your hands. Mm. Because you could have it all sort of like little silver balls like planets hanging down, couldn't you? Yeah, you could. And you, a few different sizes as well. Some of the stars are smaller. I think I've got one big one in the middle. Um, yeah, equally, that would work really well. Yeah, having one thing, one bigger thing in the middle is quite traditional in mobiles, isn't it? I'm yes. someone who loves mobiles, so I've got quite a few around the house. But I've only ever really tried making them once. But this is just so inspiring because it's something you can do, I would say, relatively quickly because my guess is that actually by the time you've sort of been pasting it and trying it one way and so on, it it's still time-consuming, but it's it's really, really kind of effective, isn't it? It's sort of instant yeah. reward. Yeah, yeah, it is. And, um, like, and then, you know, I've listened to the show as well when, when I'm not on it. And um, we we're talking about looking after ourselves and our own mental health. It just takes you away from the anxiety and the stress and you can just get into a different, well, I feel I can get into a completely different zone, take myself into it. And it's very rewarding and relaxing. And I think if anybody is sitting there thinking, oh, but, but I'm an international artist, I mean, yes, <laughs> We know all that, so am I, but, um, but I just think there's something so different, isn't there, about just making mm. something that's nice for the house that isn't challenging you about sort of all sorts of different things or thinking about grant development or projects mm. or audiences or evaluation. You can just go, I've made this. It looks great in the bedroom. And when it gets tired, I'll make another one. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But I think they're also, in terms of children's activities, really nice gifts. So if you're entertaining the family over the weekend, or you're not entertaining, but you're looking for ideas, then make some presents. Because the thing about these is they're so cheap to post, aren't they? Because they're very, yeah. very light. And then, of course, because it's the paper plate, it just folds flat. Is there anything people can use if they haven't got paper plates at home? Again, a cereal box would be fine as long as you start with a circle, so you can put a, a side plate on the plate on the cereal box as your template, and just cut it out. But again, um, there's a there's a sheet of instructions um, that we've sent over, quite you know like um, bullet points of what to do. So as long as you're starting with a circle, you just make that first slit and go round in a circle until you've got your your shape. And the also, I love making animals out of um, paper plates. But again, it could be a circle, a green paper plate cut like that with two googly eyes. And you've got a snake. <laughs> I yeah. think that has to be, if not next week's, then one coming up. Yeah. We still have, of course, our Making History Together Festival online. And that reminds me that one of our family activities is Sahira Khan with her show, The Cockerel and the Fox. And in the story, The Cockerel and the Fox, that's how she's made a lot of the animal puppets, is purely using paper plates. Mm. She's another mum. 
so I think he's got more experience. One last question. You say cutting it around in a circle, but is it basically, it's a spiral really, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's a spiral. And is that, because what we're going to do is we're going to put the instructions on the website under highlights and links with a downloadable PDF. So you can always, if you've got access to it, download it and print it off. So is there a spiral template or do you have any tips for cutting spirals? Because it's something I've never been very good at. Mm, I didn't use a template. I've just cut it roughly by hand. Um, start it. Well, actually, I mean, I, we could probably put a template together that could be uploaded so that people have got one. But basically, I started with about an inch and a half. And then as the spiral went round, just got a little bit thinner and a little bit thinner till we so we've left about a centimetre, um, which is the little part that I'm holding in my hand. And that's where you can put your string to hang it from a window. So I'm, you're going to have to have a go at this. I'm going <laughs> to take that down because also we have, if I can find it. So we've also had a couple of drawings sent in from your teenager, which I'm very pleased about. And I think you're going to talk through, but are also talking about technique. So I'm going to pop the first one up and get Tracy to order in to audio describe. Yeah, and this is is it a cricket. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Emily doesn't think she can draw, and I saw this. So I thought this is amazing. Um, so she's basically pencil drawn um, a cricket um, in segments. So it's got a small green segment for its head, um, a bigger segment for its body, smaller body, and then a long segment for its, its back half. And the um, on the wings. Yeah, and she's got the the back legs and the front legs and its antennae. But she um, she shaded it as well. She decided to use some shade, um, which she's never done before, and that creates a three D effect. Um, yeah, I really like it. What do you think, Robin? Well, it was great. I mean, it was part, basically, her, she's done this in her art lesson, but at home, so a kind of scene, and she's gone from, I can't draw, I can't draw. Um, um, and and there, you can just see it, but the idea was the teacher said to draw something, to, you know, they, they all had to choose an insect to try and draw um, and, and then colour, um, but, but almost to not have the outline um which is you know they're sort of saying you know normally you see a big kind of black outline of a whatever and then but that that very that flattens it takes you yeah know, that's you, really really yeah. good tip i mean we had a lovely man whose name of course i've forgotten <laughs> moment came around to our art club a few years ago to give some drawing lessons and he's a locally based artist and he cycles everywhere and what he specialises in is pencil portraits. So he does a lot in situ, but he, he comes home and he does a lot. And what he was saying is to, to learn to draw, you have to draw every day for a year. So he said, until you've done the equivalent of 365 hours worth of drawing, you can't possibly say that you can't draw because mm -hmm. you would you wouldn't even be able to tell but he also reckoned that just about everybody could um i'm not a great drawer i can draw but not very well so but on the other hand i'm not sure i've done 365 hours at least not recently so i'm going to take that off and emma sent us one more okay so i'll, I'll talk you through this one um so this is the second stage of this drawing in, in the sense that um, school sent home an art pack, very much a bit like how, how Together has done for our participants and stuff, um, which included a set of what they call watercolour pencils. So and originally she drew this and then shaded it in grey and um, you know black and red, pinky, but then um, got a, a very, very fine paintbrush and then wet wetted the coloring and that get that that then washes it through to give it that much more sort of opaque not colored look yeah it's um a ladybug isn't it a ladybug <laughs> a ladybird but we call them ladybugs uh yeah and, yeah I'm it's lovely isn't it a red one with black spots 
Yeah. I love the fact that you're sort of slightly looking at it from above and then seeing the shadow that would be cast from the sun behind you as well. I mean, I've, I've had, well, we use watercolour pencils at Art Club. I've had some for quite some time. If you haven't seen them, you can get them in the pound shops and they're really, really interesting because you can dip the pencils into water, you can take water to them afterwards or you can just use them as ordinary colouring pencils. But they're really versatile and, of course, they make an awful lot less mess than <laughs> traditional paints, which if you've, I don't know, if you're trying to do all sorts of other things, it's not always possible to set up a kind of painting station, but this just allows people... Yeah, a lot more flexibility. And the the other thing is the, the water doesn't get coloured by the by the paint. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about knocking over the water and it's going to be kind of containing loads and loads of paint that's going to go all over the carpet. Because I think if you're working from home and you've got two or three children working as well, these things sometimes have to be considered. So, yeah, if you're worried about mess or you just want to experiment, try watercolour pencils. And now what we're going to do is pop on a short video that can tell you more about how you can join in with our program from home. And then we will be moving on to recommend something for the weekend, lots of things you can do online or offline. We're going to say goodbye to Tracy before that, and then we will be joined later by Josh. So thank you, Tracy. Thank, thank you. you. And we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Together 2012 is running a Join In From Home programme from our website together2012.org.uk. Click on the link at the top of the page, Join In From Home, to go straight to the main page where you have a wide range of accessible, inclusive, creative activities, mostly using things that you would already have at home. At the top of the page and throughout the pages, you will also see videos in British Sign Language to translate the site for deaf people. These videos can also be useful if you have difficulties reading and you simply want to hear more of the content. The Join In From Home programme is based on the activities that we would usually be running in East London. So, for example, we have an art club which usually operates on a Tuesday with craft-based activities and on a Friday morning for drawing and painting. Here you can join in with the arts club's hands project and celebrate your uniqueness and membership of the human race. There are full instructions on the linked page here. But essentially, we invite you to draw around your hand on a piece of card. It could be an old cereal packet. Cut the shape out, turn it over and decorate it with anything you would like to do. It could be paints, crayons, glitter, collage, beads, leaves, anything you can think of. Photograph your hand or hands and send it to us at tv at together2012.org.uk. We'll add it to our video installation and share it on social media. Our music club usually meets on the first Friday of each month. We have an open mic session and we invite everybody to play along with percussion instruments. So here you can learn how to make your own percussion instruments from recycled materials. And you can also join in a percussion workshop from last summer in terms of carnival percussion. So these three instruments are used most often in carnival. We have a shaker and a go-go and a hand drum. So this is how to make a recycled shaker, a recycled a go-go and a recycled hand drum. You can also, if you're technically minded, make your own tactile sound instrument. This does require a few simple electronics, but is a very interesting and exciting project as part of our Vibrafusion ongoing work. You can also listen with Together. 
We have Spotify playlists created by Robin Surgener, also known as our TV presenter, Angry Fish. And we also have two classical music playlists from Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra, including one that's uniquely suited to people who are feeling very unwell. Welcome, Josh. So, who are you? What do you look like? And what are you dressed up to go out to stay and to do? And you need to take the mute off. Ah, oh, hang on. There we go. I'll try now. Clayton kind of let somebody into the car and you unlock it as they pull the handle in which stays locked. <laughs> yes, we sometimes have a little bit of difficulty with our provider B Live, and I think that was one of the occasions the controls don't always work, but it makes life a bit more interesting. Something seems to have happened to your sound, guys. It was a bit low. If you want to try again. How are we sounding nice and clear? How, is that okay now? You're fine. Is Josh's mic actually switched on? Yeah. I can just talk up a little bit. There we go. Can you hear me now? No. Well, we can hear you, but not not well enough. Hello. Speak properly. Can you hear me? Am I coming through nice and clear now? No, that mic isn't working. No. I'm going to move swiftly on. I'm going to let you a couple of minutes to sort that out. We'll come back to Josh's introduction in a minute. Yeah, just bear with me, guys, for a sec. And what we're going to do is it's going to snow on Sunday. So the first thing we're going to recommend from the weekend is Steraplerger is going to tell us all about how she's been making a snowman. Uh, hi. I'm Sarah. And this is Merlin. And I made a snow a snowman. It was good. But Merlo was naughty. Because he ate the the man's nose. It was very naughty. But it was funny. So just a bit of audio description on that. Stera was starting off by sitting, signing on her sofa indoors with the dog Merlot, who's a black lab next to her. And then we saw her outside with Merlot building a snowman. Josh. So we'll go with uh, take number two. Can you hear me now? We can. Who are you? What do you look like? You might even be slightly too loud, by the way, Robin. So you you carry on, Josh, and then we'll be able to tell. So hello, everyone, again. Uh, I am Josh Surgeon. I'm a PhD student and I am a host of Together uh, Unlocked. I have uh, long blonde hair that's kind of brushed slightly to the side. Um, I'm wearing a white shirt with a blue tie uh, and a grey jacket blazer that does have a pattern on it but i don't know if you can see that on camera it's kind of half check half pinstripe uh kind of design uh now i came up with this completely independently of the start of the show i thought of this on like wednesday evening and thought it'd be really funny Sorry, Robin, could you just turn it down slightly love just a fraction. Um, you keep talking, Joshua. We can't tell. <laughs> so yeah, I, I came up with this kind of because I just thought it would be funny uh, on Wednesday evening, and then watch the start of the show. Uh, but my dressing up theme is that I am dressed up to go to Switzerland to visit the court for arbitration for sport 
to argue the unjust results of Wednesday's Clockwork Paralympics. <laughs> <laughs> At the start of the show, you were talking about how we weren't happy about a draw. So it's worked out quite well that my stupid sense of humour has fitted in quite well to the start of the show. Um, oh, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Judy, perhaps we'll just move swiftly <laughs> from that. Um, I am for anybody who's wondering, particularly after the success of the Winter Clockwork Paralympics, desperately scouring the catalogues for different clockwork toys. But in the meantime, I believe something for the weekend, you have a lesbian art history event. Well, yeah, there, it's not an event per se. It's something that I thought I would have a go at, given that it's LGBTQ+. Plus month history month um and i thought right well look let's let's start off because i'm dressed up as a, a lesbian artist not maggie hamblin i have to say uh very speedily um although looking at robin it's like a brother from another mother i mean we sort of <laughs> <laughs> what, you know what's really really scary in fact is that with this scarf on i am the spitting image of my dad it's funny that right I know, but I mean, really, really. Anyway, sorry. That's, that is so funny, isn't it? How we change. Um, as I said, at one point, I looked Margaret Rutherford. I thought in the in the mirror, but um, it's these lockdown fashion looks, <laughs> isn't it? You know, Josh is another one that extraordinarily won't let a family member touch his hair. So really, they've got very, very similar hairstyles, but with partings each. Yeah, opposite parting. So really, you are very much like fraternal twins, aren't you? So we what's are. the actual event? Right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to this month, I'm going to go through the LGBTQ plus artists that are known um, and I'm going to highlight them every week. So this week it's lesbian artists up until 1950. Um, so that doesn't include Maggie. Uh, but uh, it, it does include a whole range of artists that I had just hadn't even thought about. Um, there's the obvious ones, uh, you know, sort of um, the, the ones that, that are known about, but there's a whole load that aren't. And what I liked in this particular site is it's got pictures. So you can see examples of their work. Um, and that works very, very well for me. Um, you know, I think it's so important to have inspiration um, when I was when I was a little girl, and I, I found it very difficult to read when I was in psychiatric hospital in the states. And my lovely dad used to go off on business trips. You know, he was an electronics engineer, a salesman, and he used to always come back with a picture book for me with art. Actually, it's always been art. So even though I couldn't read, I, I used to look at Vincent Van Gogh, and I was so inspired. And then. Botticelli, a whole range of, of artists right across the genres. Uh, but I think it's so important to have that exposure. And what I like about this site is having the examples of the work. Yeah, I think the internet has made such a difference. I mean, when I did Art A Level, we had two trips to London once a year to see a gallery. And then it was down to whichever reproductions you'd got in a very small library. So, you know, it's unbelievable. We'll put that link in. I'll also put the link in. The name officially is LGBT Plus History Month. It started Sorry. as we were reminiscing earlier in the week as LGBT History Month. They have a new website, which is LGBT Plus History Month. It's got masses of resources. The History Months are first and foremost aimed at schools because to sort of make up for the deficiencies in the national curriculum, which are, yeah, historically very, very narrow and very, very biased. So a lot of the resources are aimed at young people, but there's also all sorts of celebratory events, including ones that are kind of quite similar to the sort of thing you might have in Pride Month. So I am going to an event being organised by Margate Pride. It's a drag queen life drawing class. And every Friday night this month from nine to ten, one or more drag queens will be posing for your for you to draw. It's a Facebook event. If you're not a member of Facebook, it's very easy to sign up. So I'm going to pop that direct link in along with the main LGBT plus 
History Month event. And speaking as the co-chair of REGARD, the LGBTQI plus disabled people's organisation, I'm quite pleased that it's a bit of a shorter acronym. <laughs> So, guys, where, what do you recommend? What are you suggesting that we do for the weekend? Uh, well, I'll, I'll go. I'll give one of mine first. I've got a couple. Um, the first one, I mean, it's, it's something um, as as a show, and and you know, across all of us, really, we all we're interested in. Um, seems to be space, um, and because uh, I, I, I'm now on the newsletter for the National Space Centre in Leicester. Um, and 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 one of my recommendations is to actually go to their YouTube channel um, because it's now, I mean, it's expanded quite a lot over the last 12 months. I mean, I think it had stuff anyway, but, you know, they've kind of embraced the fact that, you know, because one of the things the Space Centre is, is an education centre. You know, they do lots of, it's not just things behind glass doors, where glass windows, it's, it's you know, lots of classes and, you know, how do you poo in space and all kinds of, you know, exciting things like that, or what happens to your poo in space anyway. Um, but, but, um, motion. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, um, and so, yeah, there's a really good resource. I mean, there are some that almost all of it is free. There are a couple of things, for example, this week coming, I haven't put a specific link to it, but I know it's on, on Friday. Um, there's a comedian called Rob Ince. Um, who is also a science geek and uh, is co-presenter and founder of the thing called the Infinite Monkey Cage. Um, on... Can I just... His name's Robin Ince, not Rob Ince. I don't think I, I've never heard him called Rob Ince. Well, that's what the advert said. Anyway, so um, it's a. Uh, it might not have done, but anyway, <laughs> anyway. So he. So, but that's. But uh, welcome uh, to the Together family. Yeah, <laughs> but um, that's um. It just looks really, really good, and there's loads of stuff on there. And I kind of the little write I, I write up I've put it says lots of um, info, you know, stuff relating space related information from entertainment through to space science and spacecraft. And then I thought I better put the word art in as well because obviously it's space art and craft, not just spacecraft. <laughs> <laughs> I think I get that. <laughs> Something that I've well, the reason I think a lot of us, even me, have become more interested in spaces is that sense of life being bigger than just what's happening here at the moment. And in particular, if like us and so many shielders, you've been in one place, then just a sense of how infinite the universe really is. But what's been quite incredible to me, and I noticed it again in the last couple of nights, is the sky is so much clearer in London still. Maybe not as clear as lockdown one, lots clearer than lockdown two. The number of stars you can see just gives you a clue as to how many are out there that you can't see. <laughs> you can actually see full constellations in Newham. So whether it's a question of opening your window, opening your balcony or stepping outside if it's safe, it's really, really, really worth just looking up after the sky's gone dark. Let your eyes, they say your eyes need to adjust for ages, but if it's not going to make much difference in London, but do just give it a few minutes. And I was just blown away, probably almost literally, because what I find myself doing is leaning backwards. <laughs> and then I get to the point of realising I'm actually not going to be able to get up again. <laughs> but as long as you take sensible health and safety precautions, don't do what I do, then, yeah, I think just looking out at the stars is one of the nicest things you can do for the weekend. Thoroughly recommend it. But what else do you recommend in the West Midlands? Um, so one of the things that I was going to recommend, and I didn't talk about it on Wednesday to say that for, for something for the weekend, um, is that this weekend is the Super Bowl, which is the NFL, the American football um, final. Now, if you have absolutely no interest in American football whatsoever, that's fine. I don't blame you. But if you stick around or watch it on uh, iPlayer, the halftime show that they have um, is normally a pretty cool gig. Um, I, obviously, there's not going to be any fans there this year or very limited numbers of fans um, this year. So I'm not entirely sure how it's going to work, but I know there's or at least when I checked, they were still planning to have the halftime show. Um, and yeah, I mean, having watched it for uh, quite a few years, you know, the, it's always 
a, a great kind of half hour ish performance with kind of special guests and cool light shows and fireworks and stuff. Um, so if you have no interest in football whatsoever, uh, just watch it for the halftime show and then you can go to bed early. <laughs> yeah, or watch it on YouTube. And it sounds like it's going to be the best free online gig since the inauguration. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's um, it's on BBC One or Two, I think. I can't remember which one. Um, but, I mean, coverage starts at 11 o'clock tonight and then kickoff is, I think, it's some point later. So, I mean, there's not a lot... Not, not a lot, lot can't speak not a lot else on tv there we go and get me words out um at that time anyway so i think it might be on bbc um one but yeah actually, it'll be on iplayer and youtube kind of you know monday tuesday uh if you don't want to stay up all night like i do so <laughs> okay I've, I've got one more if you want that now yeah, go for it. I don't think I have anything other than, I can say, a drag queen still lifes and just purely going out and looking at the stars. Okay, well, I mean, the other one for me, um, and, and I, I actually started having a go at it this morning, um, was to follow up on what I talked about on Monday about the uh, BBC sound effects um, soundscape mixing app. I mean, and again, it is, I mean, it's absolutely free. It's on the BBC's website. Um, and, and there are, I was looking, there are 33,000 sound clips um, with, with various filters. So you don't, you know, from length, genre, um, wildlife or dustbin truck or whatever, you know, kind of loads of ways to not have to search your way through 33,000 sound clips. Um, and I had a little go, just starting to put a couple of things together. I mean, it's definitely something that you need to invest a bit of time in. Um, but, I mean, that's not a bad thing. Go back to basics. You, For a long time, they've had a sound library, although not quite that big, online that people could download the clips. But this is an app where you can actually mix the sounds and save the sounds that you've mixed, isn't it? It, it is. And, and whilst I haven't watched it yet because I just didn't have time, there is um there's a radio one dj um demonstrating how she made her own fsx f sound effects mix um so i'm hoping that watching that will kind of show you a little bit more um of, of the immediate things to make it easy rather you know obviously like something like that you can go oh sorry mate <laughs> smack you can do that as well <laughs> um you know but but you know but but just it's such good quality. I mean, I was just, I listened this morning to two minutes of rainforest and it was just lovely. I mean, just that in itself before even layering anything around it. Yeah. And I think that's probably something really to stress, isn't it? That, you know, using the app is a great thing to do. You know, if you don't fancy hands on arts and crafts, but you want to actually be doing something, it's a great thing to do. But actually, these are just lovely sounds and it can be really mindful just to say I'm going to pick sounds around water or bird song, and, you know, almost use it as a kind of meditation. You know, I think having a sort of peaceful hour is so important to everybody. I know I find it really difficult. I said last weekend I couldn't do the hours bird watch because... You're living at home, you're working from home, you don't have any social care in still. You know, there's a lot of tasks to do. So maybe that's what I will do if I don't have time to actually do anything more active is just listen to those sounds washing over us. But talking of sound, traditionally on a Friday, we play out with live music, either from Robin, also known as Angry Fish, or somebody else. Thank you again, Sam, for Autism Blues last week. That is still up on the highlights and links page. If you didn't hear it, it is well worth a listen, and we hope to have more of Sam's work in the future. Before that, coming up on Monday, we have App Date, where we will be looking at other arts apps. We will be talking photography and filmmaking. We will be thinking of meditation. We will be finishing by relaxing with Awa, and there will be much, much more besides. In the meantime, the recording of this show will go up 
with what we call enhanced audio, but also with fewer of the picture changes just to cut down on seizure risk. The show should be up about seven, then it will be up permanently. And of course, our previous shows remain online if you're interested, or if you want to whiz through the highlights and links, those are all online as well. Robin, I'll say goodbye to Josh. Thank you again, Josh. We'll see you Monday. Enjoy your weekend, everyone. Thank you. Before you pick up your guitar, Robin, or as you're picking up your guitar, tell us a bit more about the song, and then we'll say goodbye as well. Okay, so this is a song called Petal and Bows. Um, it's actually... Hold on. It's actually uh, quite an old song um, of, of mine. Uh, it's It was on an album that I released back in... 2000 called um bob called barbed wire and potholes like i actually remembered something i'd done <laughs> that's incredible um and uh it, it's 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 about um celebrating who you are and recognizing yourself um as a gift to the world which i think is a particularly good theme for lgbt absolutely so we will say while you're set finishing setting up a goodbye from east london stay home stay creative stay well we'll see you on monday okay so this is petals and bows smile and laugh without feeling guilty it's good to know that happiness is for me that i can smile and laugh without feeling guilty It's so important, no matter who you are, to live and love and play and cry, to do all you want to do before you die. So grab your life by the scruff of who you are. Go out your doldrums and your blues. Grasp your future tight with all your might. Look in the mirror and see who is really you. Cover yourself with petals and bows. Present yourself as a gift to the world search inside your mind for the key to set you free cause in your mind you're not defined each and every one of us has so much to give so much potential and so much life to live go show that you're determined go show that you've got some fight go show that you mean business 
go exercise your rights. Cover yourself with petals and bows. Present yourself as a gift to the world. Search inside your mind for the key to set you free. Within your mind, you're not defined. Cover yourself with petals and bows. Present yourself as a gift to the world. Search inside your mind for the key to set you free. Cause in your mind, you're not defined. Thanks. Have a great weekend.